Hey folks, it's Jang here from ultimaterc.com and this is gonna be my version of an RC body painting 101 video. Uh, I'm gonna be painting up this shell right here for an off-road truck. I'm just gonna go through the whole process that I go through uh, every time that I paint up a body. This is not gonna be the end-all be-all to how to paint an RC body. It's just gonna take you through the process that I go through and the little tips and tricks that I use. Other people will have different rituals that they go through or whatnot, and that's all well and good. This is just mine. So step number one, getting right into it. I actually already did step number one because it's really boring to watch on camera, and that is the process of trimming it out. I always uh, prefer to trim out the body first before even painting it using the standard uh, little curved Lexan scissors to get all the edges and stuff because when you're trimming stuff up with the scissors, oftentimes the scissors will, will uh, scratch the insides around the, the edges just a little bit. And if you've already painted the body, then you're going to be scratching paint off. But if you haven't painted the body, you just get some scratches in the Lexan and you won't even see that once the, the paint gets put on it. Also, using a uh, body reamer to get the holes, the body post holes into the body, it's nice to do it when you have the body's still transparent because you can just lay it down directly over the vehicle and just mark off the spots because you can see where the posts go. Step number two, uh, washing the whole thing. I always like to use good old simple green, but uh, some folks will also use uh, uh, laundry detergent instead or even uh, just dishwashing soap, not, uh, not uh, a, a dishwasher uh, detergent, but just regular soap. Just try to stay away from anything that has fabric softeners in it or moisturizing creams or any of that other girly stuff in it. Just try to use just something that's regular soap. You just want to get the surface uh, nice and cleaned off. If you've got oils from your hands that have gone onto it from, from handling it, uh, the, the, the good wash will take that off and give you a more clean surface that'll help the paint to adhere. Also, if there's any mold release compound left over from when they actually made these bodies, washing it off really good will help with that. Just make sure that you don't leave any residue behind. There we go, all washed up, still a little bit wet. Now, if you wanna get your paint to actually adhere a little bit extra well, uh, while you're washing it, you can use a mild uh, scrubbing pad or something to actually scuff up uh, the, the inside surface where the paint is actually going to be uh, sprayed on. Just be sure not to rough up your window areas because that will be visible. Next thing we're gonna do is air dry this. I'm not gonna use a towel because I don't wanna get lint on it. I uh, don't even trust lint-free cloths as they're called. Uh, I'm just gonna air dry it and use a uh, heat gun on a low setting to help get this completely dry then it's time to put on some masks pretty much everybody nowadays comes with a set of window masks and these are just uh, adhesive pieces of vinyl you just want to make sure that you get those lined up well before you actually push it down try to keep the bubbles from uh, forming in it by uh, pressing it down, especially if you have something large like this, try to press it down in the center or just from one edge. I usually go from the center and then just rub it out. So I'm actually rolling any air bubbles out of it as I go. And then this is a pretty important step here. Burnish the edges. That means uh, pushing down the edges uh, really hard with a hard object. In this case, uh, I'm just gonna use the back of my fingernail. I'm just gonna go around rubbing real hard along the edges and you're not gonna be able to see this on camera, but if you actually, when you're actually doing this, if you, if you look uh, from the, the top side, you'll actually be able to see where you're creating a better uh, a bond, a better adhesion uh, of that mask against the body. You'll, you, you'll see it, it's just a visible change where tiny little air pockets are actually being squeezed out so that paint doesn't run underneath. Paint likes to bleed under things and using capillary action and then you end up getting these little uh, little lines that appear where you don't want any paint and there we go I've got all my window masks on and if you're just gonna do a single color paint job then this would actually be ready to go right now in my case I'm not gonna do a single paint job I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing in just a second but first I'm gonna move on to uh, paint real quick uh, because this is the point where most folks would start painting. Use the right paint. 
uh, make sure that the paint that you get says it's for polycarbonate or for uh, Lexan. Uh, this is, these are the two most common brands that I see in the United States. It's Tamiya paint and Pactra. Uh, I, I tend to prefer the Tamiya stuff a little bit, uh, a little bit over the Pactra. It just comes out a little bit smoother, a little bit finer, a little bit higher pressure inside. But both of these will work. Make sure you use paint that is made for RC car, Lexan, polycarbonate bodies. There are some other paints out there that will work, that will adhere to Lexan. I've tried some of them. None of them work as well, in my experience, as stuff that's actually made for the job. I'm gonna be doing this body with this modified uh, URC color scheme here. Now it is time to actually do a set of, of manual masks, of masks that I'm gonna create. You can skip ahead on this part if you want, if you're not gonna be doing uh, a multicolored uh, paint job. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty simple one because it's just using straight lines going through here. And the thing to keep in mind here is that you always want to put down dark colors first, followed by light colors. So I'm going to want to paint the black and then the green and then the yellow. You wanna keep that in mind when placing your mask so that all of this is gonna be covered up uh, at first so I can put down the black. And then I'll be able to remove one set of masking tape and just paint the green under there. And then the very last thing that will be removed will be the yellow stripe. So you wanna put your paint, your mask down rather in inverse order. So I'm going to first put down this stripe that's going to go through here for the yellow because that's going to be the last thing I'm going to remove. Then I will cover up the bottom part under here and then I'll be able to be ready to paint the black, pull off this one, paint the green, pull off this one, paint the yellow. The reason that you want to paint uh, dark colors first is that if you back a light color with a dark color, like if I were to put down this yellow and then follow up with the green or with the black, it would darken the yellow itself. I would need to actually put a whole lot of, of white backing or silver backing behind the yellow first if I don't want it to get darkened. So to avoid having to do a whole lot of backing, put down the dark first. Black, if I put white behind the black, it's not gonna turn white, it's not gonna turn gray. If I have a full coating of the black on here, then it's always gonna be like that no matter what I put behind it. So always paint dark colors first and uh, keep in mind the order that you'll need to remove your masks. So this is the stripe for the yellow. This is a masking tape that comes in a roll with a nice little dispenser from Tamiya here. It's a pretty fine stuff, but you can use any kind of masking uh, tape. Automotive stuff works pretty well. I like the Tamiya stuff because it's really thin so it can conform around small uh, body details pretty well. And again, it's very important to burnish those edges, just rub them down really well so you don't get paint bleeding under there. For the second layer of mask, I don't really need to worry about the edges at all because it's just gonna completely overlap. This is for the, the green layer and uh, I'm just using blue painter's tape because it works just fine and it is very cheap. So there's that then, all masked off. I'll paint the black, I'll pull this blue one off, then I'll paint the green, and then I can come back with the yellow. Always be sure to shake up an aerosol can in advance. Shake it up really well. If it's cold, if you're restoring it in a cold place, use the, the warmth of your hands while you're shaking it, try to cover it all the way to get it to warm up a little bit, or uh, bring it into a warm area the day before that you're gonna paint uh, warmer paints, uh, it will have a higher pressure inside. It'll come out thinner and give you an, a more even coat and just work better overall. Your very first coat should be very, very light. And I mean really light. Just a mist. You just want to get a tiny bit of paint over the entire surface. It's very important to do that first coat as light as you can to make sure that you get really good adhesion with later uh, coats of paint that come over it. Let that dry completely uh, before coming back with your second coat. Your second coat can be a little bit more thorough. Depending upon the color and how opaque it is, uh, I'll always do a minimum of two coats, usually three. Sometimes I'll even do four if need be, just doing really, really light coats. As you get towards your later coats, you can look at the body up against the sky or with a light behind it to see where you have areas that have paint that's a little bit too thin, so you can touch those up. 
You can help to speed up the process of drying the paint in between coats because you do want it completely dry between coats using a heat gun or a blow dryer on a very low setting. You want warm air coming out of it, not hot. You do not want to melt the body. You do not want to boil the paint. You do not want to melt the adhesive of the window masks into the plastic itself. You just want to apply some heat and to help blow off the vapors as they evaporate. Now it's time for me to pull off my first layer of masking tape and then I'm going to come back uh, after all those pieces are off and follow up with the green. This metallic green again, first coat goes down very light, very very light, just a mist. Then I come back with a second coat. I use a glove to help keep some of the overspray off my hand and then I just wipe the tip of the can uh, on the side of that just to help keep it from loading up and getting clogged up with excess paint. Now you can see this is a metallic paint and you can see right through it. With metallic paints you'll usually want to back it with silver if you want it to look nice and metallic, kind of bright. Otherwise you might want to use a black uh, backing if you want it to be a little bit more of a midnight look. But you see there just one quick uh, coat of silver. In this case sil silver is just a, such an opaque uh, type of paint with all that metal that's actually in it. Just one coat is all that was necessary in this case and now that's nice and opaque and bright and shiny. Pulling off the last bit of mask to put on the yellow layer and in spite of my best efforts here a little bit of black paint did get underneath. I guess I had one little spot in the corner there where I didn't burnish the edge down well enough or it just kind of stretched its way back out. Um, you might be able to just barely see it here but it, it will really bug me because it's black overspray that has kind of gotten under there. Uh, and I'm going to be painting a fluorescent yellow here. So I'm just going to use an X-Acto knife to actually scrape off the bit of paint from the area where I don't want it to be. Don't worry about the scratches being left behind. Once you paint that, you will not see those scratches one bit. For the fluorescent yellow, I actually used three light coats, but you can see that it's still somewhat translucent. So I'm going to back that with white so it comes out as vibrant and bright as possible. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna do the very last step here. I actually did a couple other things. I had put in some, some window tinting, some little stylized yellow there. I also backed the whole thing with black. I've done another video telling you about how that works, but this is the finished product. You always wanna make sure that the very last thing you do is to remove the overspray film from the outside. If you find yourself removing the overspray film and it's not the last thing that you're planning on doing, you're doing something wrong. It should always be the very last. There's the painted body. Came out just the way I wanted it. Nice crisp lines along the edge because I burnished down the edges of the masking tape. Uh, no bleed through on the windows. This is the way I wanted it. Now I can go ahead and put on my decals and this will be ready to go. So I hope that was a useful video for you. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will be doing some more painting tips videos, also uh, RC kit building tips and other things. So I will see you in the next video and I hope to see you on the friendly forums at ultimatercom Thanks for watching.